So in today's connected world, a stable and robust home network is more critical than ever. But have you ever wondered how many Ethernet ports you really need on your router? So tech enthusiasts, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Today, we're exploring a crucial component of your home network, the Ethernet ports. So let's start with the basics. Now here we have a router. A router is a device that connects multiple networks together and directs traffic between them. It typically connects your local network to the internet and manages traffic within your home network and between your devices and the internet ensuring every data packet is sent to the correct devices. And Ethernet ports are your gateway to high-speed, reliable internet connection. And the number of Ethernet ports on a router determine how many devices you can connect directly using Ethernet cables. So unlike Wi-Fi, a wired Ethernet connection can significantly boost your network stability and speed. So now let's take a closer look at the router. Now on the router, you can typically find two types of Ethernet ports, the WAN port and the LAN port. Now the WAN port stands for Wide Area Network. This port connects your router to the internet using your modem, and while the LAN ports are used to connect various devices directly to your router, and the LAN port stands for Local Area Network. And if you're dealing with high speed internet above 1 gigabit per second, make sure your router, like us, this one right here, support 2.5G or 10G Ethernet to fully leverage that speed. And this would be that port up here, it says 2.5 slash 10G. And now let's turn on this side you notice there are a lot of small indicated lights on your router. A green light indicates a good connection, while an orange light usually show a slower connection or technical issues. And sometimes they're having flashing lights, but always check the router's menu for its specific detail because the behavior of this light can vary slightly between different manufacturers and models. So, how many ports do you really need? Well, that depends on your home network's demands. For home office, the needs of the setup including computer, printers, and VoIP phones. And household with gaming consoles, smart TV, and streaming devices will require stable connections as well. And also tech-savvy household with home servers, NAS devices, smart home hubs, and multiple computers and gaming consoles. And each device here require a wire connection and need its own port. But what happens if you run out of the ports? So now we're here in front of the demonstration board. Is this how your router looks like? Now, we already used up all the ports, so now if we want to add a wireless SS point or an IP camera, it's basically impossible. But here's where a network switch can help. Now it expands the number of available Ethernet ports, and if you are installing devices that require both power and data, like an IP cameras or wireless SS point, you can also consider a power over Ethernet or a PoE switch. Unlike a standard switch, a PoE switch can transmit both power and data over one network cable, which simplifies the setup. It also offers plug-and-play installation, higher search protection, and maintains a stable connection. So next, I'm going to add it to our network. So here we have the PoE switch and it is at 100 to 240 volt AC. So let's power it up. And now we can see the indicated light is on. Next, I'm going to connect it with our router using another short patch cord. So we'll just unplug one of it and replace it with a short patch cord. And then connect it to our PoE switch. So now our PoE switch is getting the data from the router here. Then let's plug back in 
the Ethernet cable connected to the router. And if you want to add more devices like our wireless access point here, you can just simply add an Ethernet cable, plug into it. You can see the indicated light is already on since this wireless access point here is at PUE. Just mount it on a wall. Now, as you're looking at the indicated lights, if you connect to non-PoE device to the switch, you will notice the orange light won't turn on because PoE technology has a power handshaking feature that only activates if the connected device can accept power. Now, for port number eight, which is connected to the wireless access point, the orange light is on. Now, when you're selecting a PoE switch, first, you should identify the PoE requirements of the devices that you intend to connect because different devices need different amounts of power, which are supplied according to the PoE standard. Now, there are three standards, the IEEE 802.3 AF that can provide up to 15.4 watts per port, and there is IEEE 802.380 standard, that's PoE+, plus. it can provide up to 30 watts per port, and our Westmark PoE switch is using PoE AF and AT standard. And last but not least, we have the IEEE 802.3 BT standard. That's PoE++. It can supply up to 60 watts or even 100 watts per port, depending on the implementation. And then you can calculate the total power demand of all devices you plan to connect to the PoE switch. Ensure that the switch's total power budget exceeds this demand. And the power budget should be the sum of the power needs of all PoE devices plus our margin for future expansion. Then determine how many ports you need to provide power to, and consider the number of PoE-capable devices that you currently have and any that you plan to add in the future. And it's often wise to choose a switch with more PoE ports than you currently need to accommodate the network growth. So that's a wrap on Ethernet ports and expanding your home network. Remember, a well-planned network is the backbone of all your tech activities at home. And if you have any questions with your system design, please feel free to contact us through the link down in the description box below, and our team of experts will get back to you as soon as possible. Now, before you go, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech insights. So thank you very much for joining us, and I'll see you in the next video.